name is Simon. I'm the new content guy over here at Apollo. We have some really cool pictures on our Facebook and Instagram, and a lot of you guys have been wondering how to replicate them. So tonight, I'm gonna show you how to take awesome night photos of your Apollo scooter. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is find a great location for your photo. We recommend jumping on social media and searching for popular landscape or cityscape photography hashtags in your area. Using the power of social media to your advantage is key here. You'll be able to save a bunch of time and find a great location. For our shot, we searched up hashtag Montreal Skyline and found this great spot over at Parc Jean Drapeau. So let's head over there. Once you arrive at your perfect location, try to set up your gear while it's still light out. That way you'll have more time to get the perfect composition and you won't have to set up your gear while it's dark. Now for the purposes of this tutorial, we knew we wanted to take our final image at night. So we knew we had to get here right around 7.30 to 7.40 to give us enough time to set up. Now sunset is at 8.37 p.m. tonight. I know this because of an app on my phone that tells me exactly when golden hour and twilight is. And I strongly recommend this if you're any sort of photographer that does a lot of nighttime pictures. Without further ado, let's go take the shot. So I'm just dialing in the settings on the camera right now. I haven't yet decided if I want to do a high angle or a low angle. All I know is that I want the city skyline and then the scooter front and center. But really, there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's a photo, it's supposed to be fun. You can take it however you want. Once you find your perfect composition, all you have to do is wait until nightfall. Quick tip, it can get pretty cold at night, so you might want to bring a sweater. You're gonna have to fast forward that in post. All right guys, the sun is set. It's just past 9 p.m. The bugs are out like crazy. The city lights are on and we're just about ready to take this shot. But before we get started on anything, here's a list of all the equipment that you're gonna need. So first things first, you're gonna need a tripod. It doesn't have to be anything too expensive or fancy, but it's gotta be stable enough that it can withstand you pressing the shutter button without moving or shaking. We got ours on Amazon and it was less than $100. We'll leave a link to it in the description box below. Next, you'll need a DSLR or mirrorless camera. It doesn't have to be the latest or greatest or the most expensive, just anything you can get your hands on that can shoot in manual mode. That's the most important factor. Finally, you're gonna need a phone with a bright flashlight. Yeah, that's right. The secret ingredient to taking great scooter photos at night is having a phone with a really bright light that you can use to paint light onto the scooter. The technique we'll be using to get the final image is something called exposure stacking. It's actually a technique that's been used for well over a hundred years. All it is, is taking multiple photos and combining them into one master image. Fortunately, with programs like Photoshop and Lightroom, combining them has never been easier. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is set your camera to autofocus and choose one point on the scooter for it to autofocus. Once that's set, set it to manual. You won't need to change it again. You don't wanna trust your eyes for this part, especially in low light situations. Trust in your camera's technology. It knows better than you. The next step is to set your aperture from anywhere between F9 and F14. This allows your scooter to be in focus and the background as well. With your camera's aperture set so high, you're gonna notice it's not letting in a lot of light. And so your first thought is gonna to be to overcompensate by bumping up the ISO. This is actually the opposite to what you need to do. You're gonna to wanna to bring your ISO all the way down to 100. That way you'll have the cleanest image possible. Don't worry, we'll correct your exposure in a second. This is where you're gonna to wanna to step away from your camera and turn on your scooter's lights. Light up everything it has. Headlight, deck light, stem light, light it up like a Christmas tree. You're then gonna to wanna to go back to your camera and you're gonna adjust your shutter speed so that you can have your scooter and the background exposed correctly. In our case, we're gonna leave our shutter open for 20 seconds, although your times may vary based on your light conditions. Lastly, you're gonna to wanna to set your shutter button to two seconds. This will avoid any camera shake when you click the button during a long exposure. If your camera moves at all, it could ruin your shot.
Perfect. Now that we've got all our settings dialed in, we're ready to take our first photo. Now the first photo is called a base exposure. Essentially, it goes in Photoshop as the bottom layer and every other picture you take afterwards goes on top of it. Since we've got everything ready, let's go. Okay, that already looks great, but just for safety, I always like to take two pictures. Wonderful. Now that we're sure we have a good base exposure, this is where things get really interesting. You're gonna to wanna to take your cell phone, turn on the flash, hit your shutter button, and then run to the scooter. Then, using your phone's flashlight, you're gonna light one specific area of the scooter. It doesn't really matter which area you choose, I just like starting with the deck. So for the duration of that 20 second exposure, you're gonna light it. Great. Oh, that's so cool. You can already tell this is gonna to come together really well. So all that's left to do is do the exact same thing and light up all the different parts of the scooter. So we have the rear fender, the stem, and the handlebars. This is gonna look really great. All that's left to do is go back to the office, put these files in Photoshop, and make our final image. All right guys, now that we're back in the office, this is where the magic happens. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open up Photoshop. You're gonna to wanna to open up a new project, and you see I've actually labeled all my pictures already, but just take your base exposure, Open that right up. Next, you're gonna to wanna to add all the other layers on top of your base exposure. So you can go right here into Finder and just add your layers on top. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is auto align your layers. This will basically correct any camera shake that may have incurred, even if you used a two second timer in a tripod, it can still happen. So you're gonna to wanna to select all your layers and you may have to rasterize them first. Go into Edit auto align layers, auto, okay, and then you let the computer do its thing. Now once that's done, you can see here that there's a little bit of cropping going on. This means that we had a teeny tiny bit of shake in all of our pictures and we can crop this out later. Next, you're going to want to create a mask and now you're going to notice that it's going to be your primary color which is usually white by default. You're going to want to switch that to black. On a Mac, you press Shift Delete. That means fill, and you can fill it with black. Now we can't see anything from this layer because black conceals and white reveals. So with a white paintbrush, just paint over all of the highlights that you want to see. So in this case, I'm painting the handlebars, little bell, maybe a little bit of the brake here. Yeah, that looks really good. Next, you're going to want to bring your other layer up. So in my case, it's the front of the stem. Make a new mask. Shift Delete fills it with black. And then you're going to paint in the front of the stem. Now, I like to zoom in to see what I'm doing a little bit better. On a PC, that is Alt and Scroll Wheel. On a Mac, it's Option and Scroll Wheel. And then you can just kind of move your cursor around to get the perfect spot. Now, let's get in the front here. Now you'll see here that the sky is a different color. This is because my arm was in the shot when we took the picture. So not to worry, just switch over to a black brush and hide what you don't want to see. There we are. I'm going to switch back over to my white brush and just polish this layer off. Now you can use a variety of different brushes to do this. I like to use a relatively soft brush. Now what this does is it creates a feathered edge so you don't see so much hard line. So if I were to do this, you can see it's got a very hard line compared to if I change the brush to a softest brush as possible. It's a very smooth transition with a soft brush, whereas this is a very hard transition. I'm just going to hit Command Z to undo these changes. That looks pretty good. I'm going to zoom out. And then it's pretty much rinse and repeat with all the next layers. We're going to do the rear of the stem, create a mask, at this point, you should be getting accustomed to the fill command, which is shift delete, fill it with black, zoom in. There we go. That's very nice. And you don't want to miss these little details like the back of the wiring harness, which can get a really, really nice little highlight there. 
Very nice. So once again, zooming out, and we've got two more layers to do. So now the rear fender. I'm really happy with how this rear fender turned out. I like to put a lot of emphasis on the rear reflector because it shines a really bright red, as you can see in this photo here. So once again, create a mask, fill it with black, with a white paintbrush, reveal all the goodness. Look at that, that's really nice. And you can also do the edges of your tires too if you've gotten those. Perfect. Now I save the best for last. I always love doing the deck last because it's the biggest and most dramatic change. So, like every other layer, you bring it over your base exposure, create a mask, fill it with black, and then reveal. I'm gonna need a bigger brush for this and I'm gonna actually increase the hardness just a bit. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. And then if we zoom back out, there we are. That looks frankly amazing. And uh, let's do a little before and after shot right here. Here's the raw unedited photo. And now look at this. Can you believe it? All you needed is a phone flashlight, a tripod and a camera, and a little bit of patience with some software, and you got an amazing result. Obviously, this doesn't just apply to scooters. This is anything you take photos of at night. Of course, we at Apollo Scooters recommend taking nice night photos of your scooters. And send them our way. Send them over to our Instagram, at RideApollo. We want to see what you guys can do too. This video is a little different than what we normally make. So if you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe. And as always, ride safe.